Dave Ramsey is probably the most well-known Christian-based financial guru, if I could put it that way, in the entire world. Really, Dave Ramsey is kind of like that uh, that rich uncle that we all wish we had. And uh, I have uh, I've actually watched several of his YouTube videos through the years. I've read a couple of his books, and uh, I appreciate what he's what he's doing. He's got a great mind for finance, and uh, due to his personal experiences with with debt, he has uh, he has really just attacked debt and said, don't get into debt, you know, and, and actually laid out an entire financial principles where you can live your life debt free. And, uh, you know, it's been amazing. Some of the things he's taught, you know, me and my wife have both read uh, total money makeover, great book, probably one of the best books uh, on finances that every Christian person should read or should have read and uh, a great book. But um, there's something going on with Ramsey solutions right now that, that is uh, to me, it's concerning about all Christianity today. Like, Christian people need to pay attention to this lawsuit, uh, because if it goes south on Dave Ramsey, there are, there are some very strong implications for you and I as Christian people, and uh, we need to pay attention to this lawsuit. Hey guys, your friend Spencer here. I um, just a couple weeks ago, I started seeing things about uh, Chris Hogan, who is one of the Dave Ramsey personalities. Um, he's you know got a real deep, rich voice, and uh, apparently he left the company and uh, did not say why. And a lot of people have speculated that he had uh, some sort of uh, personal sinful failure in his life. And and I never did deal with it because you know my channel. This is not Christian TMZ. I'm not trying to be the the tabloids of Christianity here. Um, I, I'm not in the business of drama. I'm in the business of doctrine. And so if if this man uh, had a personal failure in his life, you know I pray for you, Mr. Hogan. God bless you. Go get restored. Go get healed. God bless you. I'm not going to sit here and just rail, rail on you for something like that. Uh, I I will deal with drama if I can connect it to a doctrinal issue, but uh, just drama in of itself, I'm not really into that business here, and that's why I never really have dealt with it. Uh, but w- there's something happening that has attached this whole situation that has uh, made me want to deal with this, and uh, this article is, is March 10th, 2021, there is a federal lawsuit against the Ramsey Corporation, Ramsey Solutions, that uh, is very important for God's people to pay attention to. Uh, the article here says, Lawsuit alleges Dave Ramsey's company fired or disciplined employees for premarital sex. And uh, there's, a, there's a video here that I want to show you, and we'll just play this for you, and, uh, and we'll just give some commentary along the way. But I've done some things personally that are not in line with Ramsey Solutions. Turmoil inside the company of financial guru Dave Ramsey, one of his top personalities, announces he's stating failures following blistering claims in a federal lawsuit. Let's go to our chief investigative reporter, Jeremy Finley, who has been uncovering insider complaints about the company. And Jeremy, what's led up to this announcement? Well, Marius, fans of Dave Ramsey knows him for two reasons. One, for how he helps people get out of financial debt. For two, for being a Christian corporation. But at the same time, the federal lawsuit is now claiming that the company is firing employees for reasons that have nothing to do with their work. Okay, basically, you know, Chris Hogan got fired, and they're saying here that uh, I, I personally, quite frankly, I don't know why in the world they made Chris Hogan have a video saying, uh, explaining all this, I think that's kind of that. Uh, it to me, it just looks brutal <laughs> to do that to this man. Uh, but apparently, he's not the only guy who's had some sort of personal failure in his life that resulted in people being terminated from this company. And uh, let's just continue on with the video here. One of the company's top personalities, America's leading voice on retirement, but today he's no longer with the company. Recently, it's come to light that I've done some things personally that are not in line with Ramsey Solutions. And as a result, I'm no longer a team member at Ramsey. While Hogan doesn't elaborate what he did, just two days ago, a former Ramsey employee requested Hogan's personnel records as part of her federal lawsuit. She's suing, saying Ramsey violated FMLA when she was fired for becoming pregnant out of wedlock. The lawsuit claims Ramsey also disciplined eight employees for having premarital sex. 
News 4 Investigates has repeatedly asked Dave Ramsey. For okay, now Mr. Ramsey, of course, they, they reached out to him and Mr. Ramsey blocked them on Twitter, which he's uh, notorious for that. And uh, so it's quite exciting. Uh, but basically what's going on is that there is a... Um, there is a code of ethics that you have to sign to work for Ramsey Solutions, and one of those things is like a, maybe a a, uh, a personal conduct policy involving things like, uh, you know, very similar to the Oral Roberts University code of conduct you have to sign to go to school there. You know, you can't you can't be some fornicator. You can't go off and and live this loose and moral lifestyle that is contrary to uh, basic Christian morality. And um, there apparently have been people who have who have violated this code of conduct by becoming uh, pregnant out of wedlock, and they have lost their jobs over that. And the lawsuit is saying that this is illegal. You cannot do this to people. Uh, there's also some stink about a Christmas party where everybody's in the room there and nobody's wearing a mask. And, of course, in Tennessee, that is not... Uh, I mean, this isn't like New York. I mean, Tennessee, it's not that big a deal. The the laws don't make you do that. I mean, it's just no big deal there. But uh, basically, he had some snakes in his deal that were living immoral. And uh, although they may have been good at their job, they did not live according to the Ramsey Code of Conduct that uh, violated, according to the lawsuit here, violated the core values of... Of the company and uh, let's just continue on. He punishes people for reasons not related to job performance. I think that in some situations they do cross a line that an employer shouldn't cross. The drama surrounding Hogan addressed as painful personal events by his ex-wife in a blog post on her website last month, also writing, I speak publicly at great risk that Ramsey Solutions could very well take steps to terminate my ex-husband and thus profoundly impact the financial well-being of my family and my medically fragile son's health insurance, which is maintained through Ramsey Solutions and which he desperately needs. Okay, so basically the, the lawsuit there is saying that, okay, you're not allowed as an employer to have some sort of code of conduct on me. And uh, the woman's name who is uh, filing this, uh, this lawsuit is named Caitlin O'Connor. And this is not a Tennessee state lawsuit. This is a federal lawsuit, which is a big deal. And, uh, and she, of course, requested Chris Hogan's personal file. And uh, she says she was unlawfully terminated after working at Ramsey, Ramsey for uh, four years uh, because she became pregnant out of wedlock and uh, saying that eight other, it also says eight other people were fired because they were fornicators. And Mr. Ramsey went in there and let them go. Um, I, I say amen, Mr. Ramsey. Good job. That's wonderful. And, uh, you know, if you're going to be a Christian company, it's going it, to, I guess, at the very least, you should, you should hold people to a Christian standard of behavior, and uh, and that's basically what he did. And so these people are mad that you know that we're losing our our son's health insurance, and he's sick and weak, and he needs he needs health insurance, and you know I'm I'm getting fired because I I I was you know messing around, and now I'm losing my health insurance. Well, maybe you should have thought about that before you did whatever you did. Um, but here's the deal. Okay, here's here's where Christians need to be very concerned about this because this any company that you work for, there is a code of conduct for the most part, unless you're like some sort of you know drug runner or something like that. There is a code of conduct, and uh, they're only mad about the Christian code of conduct upon a Christian company. Now let me let me throw out just an insane hypothetical to you. This is ridiculous, all right? But uh, it, it makes my point. Uh, let's just say you got uh, you got a bunch a Jewish family in Manhattan, and they are, you know, they're running some some bakery or whatever, and they're in Manhattan. They're doing good, and they hire this guy comes in. He does a great job. He is like one of the best like bakery employees you could ever ask for. Everybody loves his stuff. He does a good job making stuff. But let's just say hypothetically. You know, he takes a week of vacation, goes out and sees his crazy cousins out there in Idaho and comes back. And all of a sudden, when he was out there in Idaho, they converted him to like a neo-Nazi mentality. Let's, I mean, that's just a stupid hypothetical. Let's just say let's just say that happens. And you and they're working for a Jewish bakery owned by a Jewish family in Manhattan. And this guy's coming back talking about the, the Zog government, the Zionist occupation of government and uh, talking about Ruby Ridge and just and just talking out of his mind. Just crazy stuff. OK, uh, uh, 
the according to this lawsuit, if this lawsuit goes against Dave Ramsey, and these people are not allowed to fire people based on uh, on some sort of code of conduct according to the company, then that Jewish family, that Jewish bakery, cannot fire this neo-Nazi guy because of difference in beliefs. Now you'd say that's ridiculous. Well, that's that is the implications of this lawsuit. That is that is what's happening here. Um, let's just say hypothetically. I, let's just say four years down the road, Donald Trump runs for president again, and he's running against Joe Biden. And let's just say hypothetically, like there's a CNN journalist who is, of course, been working for CNN for ten years, whatever. And suddenly, this journalist from CNN goes to a Trump rally in 2024. And uh, says, you know what? I, I just believe that Donald Trump is the man for the job, and I, I just I'm going to vote for Donald Trump. Well, if this lawsuit goes against Dave Ramsey, then legally CNN cannot fire a pro-Trump supporter as a journalist. You can't fire the person based on their personal beliefs and personal conduct. It is now illegal to do so. And so I guess everybody needs to be concerned about this, not just Christians. Okay. Um, now I want you to notice the problem that I have here is it that it's not, it's not the Jewish bakeries that are, you know, that are having troubles with this. And I know my, my hypothetical there was very insane, so please forgive me, but it, it makes my point. Um, if they had fired him, it wouldn't have been on the news. It would have been, yeah, you should have got rid of that guy. Um, it, it, CNN, if somebody from their ranks were to convert to Donald Trumpism and become a MAGA supporter or something like that, they would fire the guy, and it it wouldn't even nobody would care, okay? But it's only when a Christian company has some sort of code of conduct like this that everybody's mad. That's the only point. And by the way, every every company, every college, every everything has a code of conduct. Everybody's just mad about the Christian code of conduct. That's the only thing. It's like they're picking on that. And by the way, you know, a lot of Hindu young boys are are taught, I mean, not to fornicate, and, and, and that goes against their religion too. But nobody cares about that. Everybody just cares about the Christians when they stand on that. Why is that? Why is that? Pretty weird. I want to I want to tell you this, okay? Now I've I've been, you know, traveled the world for years and over in Africa there's been a lot of mosques that I've seen, there's been a lot of Hindu temples that I've seen. Uh down in Lilburn, Georgia, I remember uh, uh, uh there was a Hindu temple that I saw. I think there's one up near Akron, Ohio as well, a big a big Muslim mosque there. Um, let's just say that that Spencer Smith just started a, a janitorial company, a cleaning company, and and I was the best in the world at cleaning marble floors. I could shine them up. Oh my goodness, I could shine them up, and I come in there and make that place clean. And I mean, it, it literally would be glistening, sparkly bright when you came in there every morning. Uh, I, I promise you, if I went to a mosque and said. I, as a Baptist preacher, want to be the guy who cleans your floor. They would not let me do that. They say, well, this is a, this is a mosque. We are Islamic. You are a Christian. No. They wouldn't do it. Now, a couple years ago, I would say the same is true about a Hindu temple. The Hindus are not going to let me come in there and clean their floors, being a Baptist preacher, because they want to keep it in-house. They, they want a Hindu to work on this. Okay, like, like, for example, over in Africa, a lot of people don't realize this, but I am, a, I am considered by the Hindus an unbeliever, and they will not even let me into their temples. They, I cannot go into that temple. I have wanted to go into those temples. I have wanted to film in those temples. I, wa- I have wanted to add content for Third Adam documentaries uh, in a Hindu temple. I have wanted to go in there and, and interview these people and talk to them. They will not let me in the doors. They will not let me enter the building because I am not a, I'm not a Hindu. And, guys, that, that, that ought to, I mean, that, nobody cares about that. We only care about when the Christian people do this. Now, here's the deal, and this is something you need to think about with me, all right? There's a code of conduct, there is a set of rules, and if you violate these rules, then you have to go. Here's the question. What happens when a church hires a pastor, and the pastor does something immoral? If this lawsuit goes through, you can't fire that preacher anymore. Now, I know it's a church, but he's an employee, technically. You can't fire him. 
you got to keep him. Okay, let's just say hypothetically you got a guy who's uh, you know runs a Christian book company and he prints Christian books. He's he's printing uh, Pilgrim's Progress and he's printing uh, you know he's printing David Brainerd's diary and he's printing these things for people. And one of his employees comes in one day and says, "I just want to let you know I'm coming out of the closet." I'm a member. Of, I'm a you know, and the, and this guy works for a Christian book printing company, and he says, you know, I'm a member of the LGBT community, and uh, okay, you can't fire that guy now. You can't. You cannot dismiss his services as an employee. You have to keep him because you are discriminating based on a religious code. You are dis- basing. Uh, you are discriminating on him on a religious basis, and you can't do that. You're discriminating. There have been there have been people pushing to say that you ha- that a church has to employ people in a Christian school or a Christian college, even if they are somebody who does not believe anything like what the values of that college or that institution are. See, this is why this is the kind of stuff why our church never got the five hundred one c three. We never got it because we we didn't want any type of of uh, restrictions on the government, and even uh, the, even during Obama, they they threatened to take the five hundred one c three tax exempt status away from churches, and so our church never got it. We just said, you know, we're going to say what we want, and you guys can't come in here and just say, well, you have to hire people, and you can't discriminate. Like you have, like if this Muslim guy wants to come and be a assistant pastor at your church, you have to hire him. We didn't even want that to be a possibility, and so our church never got it. And so, what am I trying to tell you? There are implications here, and especially on a federal level, being now that the Democrats are in power, Joe Biden's administration in power in the next four years. Um, this woman, this Caitlin O'Connor, she could win this lawsuit. And she could say, you you know, she could win it, and the federal government has to come in and say, Mr. Ramsey, you have to, uh, you have to keep these people as employees. I don't care if they're stark, raven, fornicating, you know, just women of the night. You you got to keep them, and you cannot impose your Christian values upon employees. Well, if they'll do that, if they'll do that to Ramsey Solutions, they'll do it to you. And if they'll do that to this Christian company, what's to say they won't do it to a church? You see how it always it, it, it wicked people want wicked things. And wicked people are unreasonable. She said, I, I want to I want to do these things that I've done that are against the policy of the company that has hired me, but I don't want there to be any negative consequences. You can't fire me. I have to keep my health insurance. Well, you should have thought about that before you did what you did. You should have thought about that. I want to tell you, sin comes with a heavy cost. It always has, always will. Sin will cost you more than you want to pay, keep you longer than you want to stay. It's a terrible thing. And so when I think of this situation, you know, I whatever with Mr. Hogan, that's, you know, I don't care. Mr. Hogan, I'm praying for you. God bless you. Go get better. Go get everything straightened out. Get healing, get help, whatever you need. I don't know. I don't even know what you did. You never said but if this lawsuit goes against Dave Ramsey, then who's to say that they can't oppose this same principle upon a church? Not good. So, guys, this world is on a collision course with God. Things are looking really good because things are looking really bad. And I pray that you would get right with God before it's too late. We love you. Please consider being a channel member supporting this ministry here, and uh, we love you guys. Thank you very much, and have a great day.